big gap down the left field line. He's burned this club once already like that. Here's the 1-1 delivery. Daryl Porter, ground ball, in the right field. Great diving stop by Cooper. He throws the first, and he gets Porter, and he saves the game. Well, there have been two runs that were taken away from the Cardinals on diving stops by the infielders. This one by Cooper. Earlier, Gantner did it on a base hit by Hendricks. That was labeled base hit, but the inning is over. The Milwaukee defense was outstanding proving that Harvey's wall bangers were more than just a bunch of good hitters. The 6-4 Cardinal loss meant that St. Louis would return home down in games 3-2 in the best of seven series. But history was on the Cardinals' side. Only 12 of 47 teams had ever come back from 3-2 deficits to win the fall classic, and St. Louis accounted for three of those comebacks. In addition, seven of the 12 previous Cardinal World Series had gone the distance, seven games and St. Louis was the victor in six of seven of those series. Perhaps tradition and history would work in favor of the Cardinals. With their backs against the wall, the Cardinals turned to John Stuper. When he took the mound on Tuesday, October 19th, Stuper became only the 14th rookie to record two starts in a World Series. Stuper threw his first pitch at 721 that night, and his last one five hours later at 1221. In between were two hours and 21 minutes of game action and two hours and 39 minutes of rain delays. Not many minded the delays, however, since it was the Brewers' parade that got rained on and not the Cardinals. Second inning, the Cardinals took a 1-0 lead after Dane Ords doubled and scored when Willie McGee reached first safely on an error. Tommy Herr was up next to face Don Sutton. He fires now and Tommy Herr, it's a long one into right field. Way back, way back, off the wall. McGee's around second. He digs for third. Here's the throw home. McGee is safe at home. And the Cardinals lead two to nothing. And Tommy Herr has just hit the farthest ball we've seen him hit all year. He missed a home run by about two feet. Two innings later, it was Darrell Porter's turn to put things out of reach for the Brewers. Now it's Porter's job, as it was over at Bells earlier, to pull the ball, move the runner over somehow. Preferably drive him home. The pitch to Darrell. Swing and a long one into right field. Way back. Adios. And the Cardinals lead four to nothing. It just got over the wall. It hit the concrete pillar. Came back on the field. And the Cardinal fans are crazy. That wasn't all the fans had to cheer about in the inning. Dane Orge did his part to keep the noise level high. There's nothing doing in the Milwaukee bullpen, in case you're wondering. They're sitting pretty still, leading three games to two. Trailing in this game, four to nothing, fourth inning, and a swing and a line drive base hit into the right field corner. Looks like another double for Dane Orge. The ball gets away from the right fielder. Orge goes for third. He is safe at third base with nobody out. At that point, Dane's slugging percentage was 929 in the World Series, and he was on his way into the record books as the World Series' most successful designated hitter. The fourth inning still wasn't over when Tommy Herr stood at the plate with one out and Orge at third. Ball wind up. Squeeze play. Herr bunts the ball. It works. The throw to first. He's out. Five nothing Cardinal. Several hours later, after two lengthy rain delays, the game was winding down with the score 13 to nothing in favor of St. Louis. Stuper had courageously resumed where he left off and was three outs away from being the first rookie to hurl a World Series shutout. But understandably, he tired in the top of the ninth, gave up a double, a single, and a wild pitch, and watched a Milwaukee runner cross the plate. In this game, Stuper allowed only two walks and four hits on his way to a 13-1 sixth game victory. They kept the Cardinals in the World Series by evening the action at three games each. Not bad for a rookie. After six months, 162 regular season games, three playoff games, and six World Series games, the championship of the 1982 season boiled down to one game. The rest of the year didn't amount to a thing anymore. Everything was riding on these last nine innings of play. Much to the delight of Cardinal fans, Joaquin Andujar was declared ready and able to pitch. There was no scoring in the first three innings, 
But in the top of the fourth, the Brewers tried to change that. Robin Yount was at first with one out, and Cecil Cooper at the plate. One on, one out for Cecil Cooper. And the pitch coming. Swing and a ground ball, base hit into right, and the runner will go on to third. Hendricks' throw is close, but out at third base. He threw him out, and the batter stays at first. Hendricks throw a one-bounce strike over there. I didn't think he had a chance, but the ball came perfectly to Obertel, and he banged him out. So much for that challenge. The Cardinals didn't waste any time in mounting an attack of their own. Willie McGee let off the bottom of the fourth with a single. Tommy Herr followed with another hit to set things up for Lonnie Smith. There's no score in the bottom of the fourth. And the pitch to Lonnie is coming. Swing, and there's a ground ball to deep short. It's a base hit and a run scores. The Cardinals lead one to nothing. The lead didn't last long. The Brewers tied the game in the top of the fifth, then tacked on two more runs in the sixth to take a three to one advantage. Time was running out on the Cardinals. They had nine more outs to play before the season would come to an end. It was the bottom of the sixth when the Cardinals number four and five batters took charge. The bases were loaded with one out for Keith Hernandez. With the bases loaded, one out and a three one count. They're roaring here, here's the pitch. Swing on a line drive into right center. That ball is a hit. That ball is a hit and the score is tied. The other man to third, safe. We have a 3-3 game on a hit by Hernandez. And George Hendrick was next. It's white knuckle time. If he could rip one, he could give the Cardinals a quick three-run lead. McClure from the belt to the plate. Swing and a ground ball, base hit to right. The Cardinals take the lead. Hernandez stops at second. It's four to three. For two innings, the Cardinals protected their slim one-run lead. Then in the bottom of the eighth, they delivered a crushing blow to Milwaukee's comeback hopes. With runners at first and second, Darrell Porter was showered with cheers one more time after he got the better of Brewer reliever Mike Caldwell. Caldwell to the belt. The left-hander delivers. Swing and a line drive into right. That's a hit. Lonnie Smith scores without a play. The other man to third. He's safe. It's five to three. Porter has pumped some air into the Cardinals' leading margin. Steve Braun then drove in the final run of the season for the St. Louis Cardinals. Here's the pitch. The runner goes off first. A swing, and there's another hit by Braun into center. A run scores. It's six to three for the Cardinals. Now it was up to Suter to get three more outs. Just three more, and the trophy belonged to St. Louis. The count began. Suter versus Ted Simmons. A swing and a ground ball. Suter has it. Goes to first. Out at first. One gone. Two outs away. Suter versus Ogilvy. Ogilvy grounds the ball to Tommy. Nice going, Tommy. Out at first. Two out. Two out. One out away. Darrell Porter was backing up the play behind first. He races behind the plate. Suter can't wait to get back up and pitch to Gorman Thomas. And finally, the Cardinals were one strike away from victory. Suter from the belt to the plate. A swing and a miss, and that's a winner. That's a winner. A World Series winner for the Cardinals. Porter throws his mask into the air. The players converge around the mound. The Cardinals have won the game six to three. The Cardinals have won the National League pennant. And the Cardinals have won the 1982 World Series. Yeah!